Now, a fair number of thinkers do not find rationalism all that plausible. They ask, what are these great necessary truths that we're supposed to know on the basis of reason alone? At first glance, this seems like a reasonable complaint, but if we look more carefully, we can see that rationalism is actually more persuasive in our knowledge than is initially apparent. To illustrate this, let us consider the text of the Declaration of Independence, written in 1776. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government. What's notable here or striking is the re reference to self-evident. The crucial claims of the Declaration of Independence are presented as self-evident truths, that is, truths that are justified in the light of reason alone. Moreover, the claims at issue, namely that all men have equal rights, and that people have the right to revolt against their government if it fails to protect them in their rights, are, if they are true, necessarily true. They must be so. For it's not a contingent feature of humans to have moral rights. If humans do have fundamental moral rights, they have them necessarily. This suggests that moral knowledge is justified predominantly on the basis of a priori reasoning. The weakness with this line of reasoning is, of course, that not all people agree that moral claims are true or false, that, that there are many people who are just skeptics about moral claims. We'll discuss this issue more later when we get into ethical and moral theory, but for now we can suggest uh, a conditional argument in defense of rationalism, which takes uh, a form that you should be familiar with, modus ponens. If we have moral and political knowledge, then rationalism plays an important role in justifying our beliefs. We do have moral and political knowledge, therefore rationalism plays an important role in justifying our beliefs. A second argument in defense of rationalism is based on the claim that a priori knowledge doesn't seem to be as vulnerable to a certain type of skepticism as empirical knowledge is. We saw that empirical, or empiricism rather, goes hand in hand with the natural sciences, but they are in a constant process of change. Physicists, for example, used to believe that matter was made out of uh, atoms, which they thought were these indivisible, small, solid particles. But they since discovered that atoms themselves consist of of, of other parts, and that they're not solid, but they have some empty space in them. Um, they even detect things like electrons and neutrons, uh, that those particles have parts too. And so you can see there potentially is no end in sight to the process of new discoveries about that sort of thing. So empirical or, or, or certain sorts of scientific claims are always subject to revision. And, and that can convince some philosophers that the natural sciences don't produce genuine knowledge, only beliefs, and we call those beliefs theories, by the way. Genuine knowledge is supposed to be timeless and unchanging. And in fact, it was Plato who first raised this objection against empirical knowledge. Plato was actually a rationalist, and he didn't think that empirical investigations of the physical world could lead us to genuine knowledge, only to beliefs. 
uh, Plato was more impressed by knowledge of mathematics. He thought that a mathematical proof, once discovered, wouldn't later be revised. And that's kind of by definition of the word proof. And so when we learn classical geometry, even today, we learn the same proofs that Euclid discovered more than 2,000 years ago, Euclidean uh, geometry. So unlike uh, natural sciences, mathematics does seem to lend or lead, excuse me, to knowledge that is eternal and solidly justified in the light of reason. So the gist of this is that to increase the importance of a priori knowledge by discrediting the status of empirical knowledge seems to be the goal. And that's exactly what Descartes set out to do uh, in his meditations. Uh, a convinced rationalist might therefore say that if there is any knowledge, it must be a priori knowledge, since empirical investigation produces only beliefs or things that can be called into doubt.